Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tips podcast. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. I am so excited to... We've got such a great show for you guys today. We're going to talk to one of the, the people who finally was able to get me to understand how to use Instagram for my business, Jen Herman. Now, Jen is passionate about social media marketing, enjoys sharing her knowledge with others. She writes about trends in social media and provides advice to small businesses on how to best manage social media. She's been featured as a top 10 social media blog of 2014. And, I and, believe 15. Also this, and 15 this year, that's right, as determined by Social Media Examiner. She's been featured in blog posts for Social Media Examiner, contributing blogger to Social Solutions Collective, Neil Schaefer's Maximize Social Business, and Karate, contributor of the week for Biz Sugar, and author of The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Instagram, which I have read and is awesome and has helped a ton. So, Jen, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much, Jeff. I'm so excited to be here and talk visual marketing and Instagram and Pinterest and all the fun stuff. That's right. Well, I appreciate everybody stopping by today. And as Jen and I are talking, uh, make sure you ask questions in the comment stream, and we'll bring those into our conversation. And hopefully, Jen can give you some great ideas and advice as we go through the show today. So, um, let's just kick it off real quick. I noticed, I first noticed you, I think, when when Mike Alton started really sharing your stuff over on Google Plus, um, and and I just, you know, I got intrigued with Instagram because I was trying to figure it out, and I could not figure it out how I could get it to work. Um, but kind of tell us your story, how you got started in social media and, and Instagram. Yeah, it was my story's kind of, I mean, it's kind of random, but I don't think it's that random. Um, I was actually, I have a full-time day job, and the, uh, the upper management wanted to get more on board with modern technology, let's say. And so I wanted to get them on social media and, and you know, kind of boost some things, but I went through a lot of challenges getting them to understand Facebook, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn, Pinterest, all these different kind of facilities and, and what they did and how they worked and what a negative comment would mean and, and all these things. So as I went through these challenges trying to bring them on board, I realized, you know, I'm probably not the only one going through this. And because I just can't sit still and I have to do 9 million things in my life, I figured, let's start blogging about it. So one day I sat down and started a blog um, with no real intention of what was going to happen. I just, I've always done training at my jobs and I like to, you know, teach and educate. So I figured a blog was a good way to do that. And I just started writing. Um, I didn't have a plan, a schedule, a strategy. It was throwing spaghetti against the wall. Um, fortunately, some of it stuck. <laughs> and from there, I was kind of able to, to take a strategy out of it and grow it. Um, I started blogging in January of 2013, so I literally just had my uh, my two-year anniversary. So the fact that I've been a top 10 social media blog for two years in a row is is more than shocking and astounding, and, and I'm super proud of, of what's been accomplished on my blog, but mostly to my readers who come back week after week and, and continue to give me the ideas and the thoughts behind what they're struggling with that I can give them the answers and help everyone else out. And then... During that process, I found Instagram. Um, I started just doing kind of social media, but I was like, hey, if I'm going to do this, I need to understand Instagram better. Um, first person to admit, late adopter. I was not an early Instagrammer. I, I didn't. I was like, I have a million other things to do. Who needs a photo sharing site? But man, I got addicted. <laughs> I fell in love with it. I just, I loved it. It was, and to the point where like, I would go for dinner and I, would, I wouldn't let people eat because I wanted to take photos of their food. And right. we'd be walking the dog, and I'd be like, no, stop, I have to take a picture of this flower. Um, right. Again, didn't really have a strategy when I started. It was more of just kind of an obsession. And as that obsession grew, I learned the real value of it from a marketing perspective, and that was when I dove into it. And that's now become my niche, is, is Instagram marketing for businesses. Um, I am super passionate about it. People have to shut me up. If, if you say Instagram and let me open the floodgates, yeah, you, your ears will bleed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, so um, is, is there a reason that you kind of gravitated towards Instagram instead of like Facebook or something? What, what really drew you to it? Was it because you've always shot a lot of photos or was it just a, a new thing? What was, why did you like it so much? There's a couple reasons. One, I do love photography. Um, I tend to navigate towards, you know, taking photos at, at events, and, and I'm the person that will neurotically rearrange people because I'm like, I want things height arranged right. and, and things like this. So I kind of have an inherent knack for photography, and I understand lighting and, and positioning and things like that. So for me, taking photos and sharing it was a natural path. It wasn't, you know, something completely foreign in that perspective. 
but I love the simplicity and the the instantaneousness, if that's a word, of of Instagram. I just love that you upload a photo and it's so easy. You can put a caption or not for marketing. Yes, use a caption. Side note, um, but it's just so simple. It's it's not Facebook. There's there's no complications. There's no will someone see it or not. It's it's not Twitter where it, it disappears so fast and then you're restricted to, to character limits. And it was just very freeing in terms of a platform that we could use. And I just really navigated towards that. Awesome. Well, I wanted to pull up a comment real quick. Uh, my buddy uh, Shannon Hernandez says, "Hey, Jen Herman, I know what you mean. I'm totally addicted. <laughs> I might have uh, too much of an addiction." And you know that's no such thing, Shannon. <laughs> we, 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 well, you can't be too addicted. <laughs> well, you know, and here's the thing. My kids love Instagram. I mean, that's their network. I have a uh, junior high daughter and a uh, freshman in high school son. And they actually use that. I mean, they communicate it. They share it with their friends. That's how they talk to each other. Um, why do you think this platform is so popular, especially for this younger generation? I think because of the simplicity and instantaneousness of it. It really is. I mean, we, we're moving more and more constantly into an, an evolution of, of I need it now. Um, I mean, everything is. And, and let's face it, I can post something on Facebook this minute, and you're going to see it in three days when Facebook decides to show it to you. So, the, the, you know, Instagram, it's there. And like you said, people are communicating this way. They're, they're sharing photos of, of what they're doing with their friends and having a, a conversation back and forth. You'll read their comments, and that's, they're not texting. They're Instagram messaging, you know, or, or commenting that way. Um, and it's just, it is so easy to use. I mean, it, it's how hard is it to take a photo and upload it? And really, a photo does say a thousand words or more. So, rather than having to post a status update that says, okay, I'm sitting at my desk working on this, you take a picture, everyone knows what you just did, and you don't have to say anything, which, for better or worse, um, it, it could be seriously hindering the gram grammatical challenges of our, uh, our youth. Right. But, um, <laughs> but it is something that I think they gravitate towards because of the fact that it's just so easy and it, it, it's so communicative in such a simple format. Yeah. Um, here, this is a question that I'm sure you get asked all the time. Um, you know, I've, I've one. How do you? I mean, can you really drive traffic? If I'm a small business, can I really drive traffic with Instagram? Hell yes, without okay. question. I do it every day, every single day. Um, it does take a strategy. It does take doing it the right way. Just posting a photo to Instagram is not going to drive traffic to your business. You have to know what you want out of Instagram, first of all. Are you trying to get people to buy a product? Do you want them to come to your, you know, your lead capture page? Are you trying to get them to, uh, you know, sign up for an event? What do you want them to do? Once you know what that is, you can craft your content accordingly. Not every single piece is going to be a sales pitch, you're, you know, but you, when you do use those sales pitches and you want someone to, let's say you're trying to get them to buy a product, you can say, you can, you know, put a text overlay on the image that says for sale or put the price or available now or limited quantities or whatever it is. You use your caption in a really good way, clear and simple. Use a really good call to action that says click on the link in my bio. Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing because that is the only clickable link on Instagram. If you put the link in the caption, no one's going to use it because you have to copy and paste and navigate away. It's a pain in the butt. Right. So click on the link in my bio. They go to your bio. Make sure that link is where you want them to go. That's the next most important thing because if you send them to your home page, now they have to find a product page and they have to navigate, they're so long gone. So make sure you put that link, which you can change as often as you want, as many times as you want. As You, know, you can change it daily, hourly, whatever you need to do. Send that link where you want them to go. And I do recommend you put in a trackable link, like either uh, Bitly or a Google Shortener link, because that allows you to track it. The way mobile devices work, if you click on a link in Instagram, you have to approve the browser. Once you've approved the browser to go look through, you're no longer referral traffic, you are direct traffic. So your Google Analytics will not show your Instagram traffic legitimately, mm -hmm. which is why everyone turns around and says, I'm only getting two visits a month from Instagram. Well, that's because only two people from the desktop version went to your site through Instagram. It's not counting mobile. So put that clickable link, and I guarantee you, you will see how much traffic you're generating, and it will shock you how many people come to your site. Wow. that I did not know that. And I thought, you know, I'd, I'd figure this stuff out. See, that's... <laughs> 
That's why I have you on, so I can pick your brain for free. Um, <laughs> exactly. So that is genius. And here's another idea that I, I've heard from other places, and I wanted, uh, again, to pick your brain for free, is um, is it a good idea to make a specific Instagram landing page? And this is what I'm talking about. Like, if they click on do my call to action, click on my link to my bio, I can have my latest show. I could have my podcast. I could have, you know, a product download and or even a video saying, hey, Instagram, thanks for coming and, and clicking on my bio. Here's all the stuff I offer. Is that a good idea or not? Yes and no. It's all going to depend on your business and your goals. If you're trying to sell a product, like if you're a retail-based business, that's not the smartest thing because you want them to get right to that product page. Think about the fact that by the time they've looked at your post, read your caption, gone and clicked on your bio, gone and clicked on the link on your bio, gone to your website, we want them where they need to go. We don't want them to have to navigate. They've already hit three or four or five buttons at this point. We don't want to lose them any further. So if you're selling a product and you're trying to get instant results that way, don't use a landing page. Send them exactly where you want them to go, whether that's a home page, a specific product landing page, the actual product page, whatever it is. If you're more like a B2B, a landing page can be a really good idea because like you said, you can instantly welcome you know, the Instagram user, kind of give them some background that you got the key links of things that they're looking for. For me, I send everybody directly to my blog page. That's what I'm promoting on Instagram is my blog. So that goes right to my blog page. Obviously, the most current blog is going to be the one at the top. That makes it easy. Um, it's not a specific landing page, but it's also it, it's catered to what I'm giving them. So you could use a, a, a specific landing page and format it how you want it fit. And within there, you could even put a lead capture, you know, format in there, get their, mm -hmm. their, you know, email for whatever purpose, get them to sign up for free downloads, things like that. So you want to keep them there once you get them there. And that's going to depend on your business, how the best way to do that is. Interesting. Is there a specific churn rate for like uh, Instagram videos? I mean, I mean, Instagram, uh, photos because let's say I, I was a like a, a local flower shop and I was selling a specific bouquet of flowers and so I take a picture of that. Um, how long do I change that link out because if I want to take another shot of a different flower to go to a different product page, is there a certain amount of time you need to wait before you post another photo? What do you suggest for that? It's going to depend on your audience and your traffic frequency. I mean if you're a high volume and you're getting a lot of you know, reaction out of Instagram, you could change it every few hours. Most people are going to want to leave it up for at least a few days, a week, something like that, because the thing you have to think about is if you're following a thousand people on Instagram, it gets a little bit more like Twitter. It's really fast moving. So those posts could kind of fall away really quickly. But if you're only following 30 or 40 people and you happen to be following your local flower shop, that post could actually stay in your feed for two or three days. So by the time they see it, you if you've changed it out six times, that kind of becomes invalid. So like I said, it depends on who your primary audience is um, and, and what you're selling. If you're, if you're changing a product out daily and people know that, then change your link daily because that's what people are going to learn to expect. You, you train your audience as well as they train you. So if, if it's something that works better every week, change it every week. Um, likewise, if you're, you know, maybe you send everybody typically to a landing page, but maybe now you have a specific event coming up and you want to promote that, then change the link to that event. And once that event is over, now you put it back to your normal landing page. So if anyone clicks on that, they're not going to end up on that event page because it's over and done with. So if you're doing something that's time sensitive, make sure you keep an eye on that time frame too. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, I'm also seeing a lot more uh, sponsored posts on Instagram. I had one come up. It was a beer company. I think it was Heineken. I don't know why. Nice. They targeted me. But um, is this on the rise, and is it open for everyone yet, or is it just major big brands? It is on the rise, um, and it is for big brands only. Okay. So little brands, even medium brands, you don't stand a chance. And I'm honestly totally okay with that. Um, I don't want it to become a marketing platform because then all the schmarmy salespeople show up and try to overtake the platform. And I love right. Instagram too much for them to ruin it. Right. Um, but it is right now, It there's they're very selective in who they choose. And the CEO of Instagram actually personally approves every single ad. That's how few of them are out there. He, every single one goes across his desk for him to approve. So, and if, I don't know if you know this, but when you see an ad, if you click on the little three dot button on the ad, you can actually hide it, give feedback about either why you like it or don't like it, um, and 
give them some insight because if there's been a couple ads that have come through my feed that I'm like, what is this? Like, this is so yeah. inappropriate either for me as a user, or yeah. I just don't think it's Instagram organic type images. And I have no problem telling them my two cents. I, whether or not they really listen to me, I, I don't know. But I feel like at least I chimed in and, right. <laughs> and gave them my voice. Right. Gotcha. Uh, you mentioned one time uh, when I was reading your blog, which is a great blog. Anyone who needs to get some info on Instagram, I mean, it helped me so much. Uh, they need to go to jenstrends.com. But you mentioned in one of your posts that there is no edge rank algorithm for Instagram like there is for Facebook. Now, can you tell our viewers and listeners why that is so important? Because everyone sees everything. <laughs> there's no hiding. Uh, no, yeah, there's no edge rank. There's no creepy algorithms or anything to kind of hide your content. If you post something on Instagram, any one of your followers can see it, assuming they log on during the time frame that yours is in the feed. As I kind of mentioned earlier, depending on how many people you're following is going to depend on how much you see. Um, the average, so when you log on to your Instagram, you will see the last 75 posts in your chronological order. So if I post something at 5 o'clock this morning and you log on at 8 o'clock at night, you might see it if I'm within your last 75. But if you're a high-frequency user and follow a lot of people, you're not going to see my post from 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm. So that is something to keep in mind. Again, how active are your users? You know, Do you need to be posting once a day, twice a day, once a week? That, that posting schedule will depend on that kind of frequency. But because there's no algorithm, yes, anything can technically be open to be seen. There's no hiding it. There's no preferential treatment. It's all out there for everyone. And that's just awesome. Cool, cool. Um, should businesses, small business, should they connect their Instagram account to their Facebook business page? Is that a smart strategy or not? I err on the side of saying no. Okay. And the reason I say no is because when you give people easy, cheat shortcuts, they tend to take advantage of them. And my biggest thing that I always said in social media is every platform is different. Yes, you can share the same content to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, whatever, but you don't want to share it in the same context. So 140 characters on Twitter and, you know, uh, maybe a two paragraph post on Facebook and maybe a, a short snippet on Instagram. Because again, people are not on Instagram to read a novel. So right. if you can keep it under 500 characters, that's ideal. But it, so you don't want to get in the habit of linking your Facebook and your Instagram where when you post to Instagram, you just link it right to Facebook. Also, if you have the Facebook audience, you want to bring them to Instagram but they're not going to stay if you're not giving them something unique and different. If everything you share on Instagram shows up on Facebook, why would they follow you on both? Right. So I recommend you share occasional Instagram content to Facebook, especially if it's a great photo or something. Share it. Let people know what's going on. But then advertise that you have either more, you know, come over to Instagram to see the rest of the photos from this event. You know, use it as a teaser to get everyone over to Instagram. Um, or say, you know, hey, you know, we are on Instagram. Feel free to come join us and, and check out tomorrow's post on blah, 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 blah. So there, you want to share back and forth and do some cross promotion, but I don't recommend linking them because people tend to get lazy and, and then right. the strategy falls apart. Okay, so this is what I did just the last couple of days. I created a post. Um, I'm a big uh, Huey Lewis and the News fan because I grew up in the 80s. So I posted a thing with my logo that said it's hip to be square because Instagram is Instagram square. Yeah, square, yeah. And so I posted that on Instagram, got a lot of likes. Well, I also posted it on my uh, Google Plus page and said, you know, hey, I'm doing the show with Jen. Also, Instagram is hip to be square. Follow me on Instagram, and I use the same image. So... And we're going to Absolutely. talk about that. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I think the cross promotion, not doing it all at once, but maybe spacing it out. Because you know, I'm going to share that later on my Facebook page because I want to drive people to sign up for my Instagram account as well. So I think not just doing a you know a dump of your image on all the platforms, but saying okay, I'm going to do it here this day. I'm going to wait another day and do it here uh, is kind of a, a good strategy to do. So. Absolutely, I agree, 100 percent. Gotcha. Um, the other, do you have any just you know off the top of your head? I have no idea what I'm doing on Instagram. What are some best practices for small businesses? When you when you first start talking to people, what are some things you say, hey, you've got to do this? First and foremost is setting up your profile. This is the most important thing. So you have a name, which is what the name will look like on your 
account and you have your username, which is how everyone will recognize you on Instagram. So your username is when you upload a photo, comment, or do anything. You're known by your username. Okay. So make sure that represents your business, whether it's your name, whether it's a keyword. You know, like a lot of people will put, you know, Joe Smith underscore photographer or photography or wedding photos or something that every time someone sees that username, it's a branded you know, connection with what that industry and that person does. That's really important for a lot of small businesses to set themselves apart. If you don't have a name that's necessarily recognizable, um, like I'm at Jen's Trends because I, people can know my name, but I want them to know how to find me as, as a business. So get the username the way you want it set up. Also recognize that the name, which is what shows up in your, your actual profile, and your username are the only searchable criteria on Instagram. So if you want to be known in a certain industry, put that keyword in either your name or the username so that you show up in search. If you put it in your bio, it means nothing to the search engine of Instagram, mm -hmm. which that's, my, that's one of my only real gripes with Instagram is their search capability really sucks. But if you use it right, <laughs> you, can, you can kind of trick the system and make it work for you. Um, and then, yes, absolutely make sure you got, we talked about the URL in your bio. Make sure that is where you want it to go. Use the clickable, trackable link. That kind of stuff is really important. Have a good profile photo. If you can make it the same as all your other accounts, I highly recommend that because, again, the search functionality is not good on Instagram. You want people to know instantly that it's you. So if they know your photo from every other platform and they immediately are going to make that photo recognition, they'll know it's you. So be good with that. If you can use the same Twitter handle, do that because, again, that – makes for easy recognition if you've got a ton of followers on Twitter and they know you. It makes it easier to have the same, you know, Instagram handle. It doesn't have to be. Um, you know, Mari Smith is an example. Her name, I think, was taken, so I think she's Mari underscore Smith on, mm -hmm. on Instagram, not the end of the world. But if you can, try to keep your Twitter and Instagram the same. And then, really, it's just about knowing what you want out of Instagram. Once you know what you want, you can create the right content. And it has to be part of that strategy. Don't, don't just take pretty pictures of, of cars and flowers and sunsets and, and pets if you're a barber. <laughs> right. you know, if it's completely unrelated, it's, it's not doing you any good just because you got a bunch of likes. It, if you can tie it to your business, like, hey, gorgeous sunset tonight you know, outside the barber shop, great. Tie that into your business. But don't just share random pretty photos just for the sake of trying to get engagement. Make sure you're using the right context. And then utmost importance, make sure you're using hashtags. Mm -hmm. I am not a hashtagger. I, you won't see me use a hashtag on any other platform. Maybe Twitter if I have to, but Instagram, I'm kind of a hashtag whore. And it just, it happens. You have to do it. <laughs> if you're going to get the reach, going to get the exposure, have your own personalized um, custom hashtag. Okay. And then use relevant industry hashtags. Don't use Justin Bieber and Kim Kardashian just to get Right. Reach and exposure. Use relevant hashtags. Okay, because I, I, what I've done is, you know, I do hashtag mainly Pinterest tip, and then I do all the mm -hmm. social media, you know, hashtag SF, you know, social social media marketing and all that stuff. So, um, and is are do you have any good places to find like um, industry specific hashtags or a resource you can go to kind of look those up or see what the most the popular best are? place is is really Instagram. Um, see what other competitors are doing. See what they're using. All you have to do is tap on the hashtag to see what comes up in the, that hashtag hub and that list of results. Be wary of really popular ones. So, for example, you mentioned using hashtag social media. Yes, I use that hashtag. I admit to it. But if you ever look at the hashtag for social media, there's, like, nothing on there about social media. It's half-naked people and random, you know, right. selfies. And, and right. it's completely unrelated to the industry of social media. So, and, and when you use those really popular ones, you tend to invite more spam because people tend to troll the really popular ones and like, oh, like my profile and I'll like you back and, okay. and all those spam. So avoid the really popular ones. But, you know, then again, sometimes you want to fall into those, those really quick results. So just see what your competitors are doing. See what other people in the industry are doing. You can also use Tagboard, T-A-G-B-O-A-R-D to search for hashtags and how well they're being used across platforms. So if you're going to create your own custom one, search it on there first. And then if you're using popular ones, you can see are they really popular on Twitter, but maybe not so much on Instagram or vice versa, and kind of see what's working in the different avenues to see what you want to kind of focus on with your Instagram hashtags. Awesome. 
I, I want to touch on this because I want to get to the Pinterest uh, and kind of the comparisons between the two visual networks in a minute. But one of the things I found, and I didn't know this traffic trick, so I'm going to have to go back and check my traffic because I thought, oh, I'm not driving that much traffic, but maybe I am. Um, but uh, one of the things I really liked Instagram for was the networking stuff, uh, networking with people in my industry that in on Facebook and even Pinterest and some other things, I would have been lost in the noise. But yes. for some reason, I can you know I did some, a certain hashtag. They liked my image and they started following me. And so I think that's something a lot of people don't talk about. But the networking that can go on in Instagram because it's a little more intimate. I mean, it's more intimate than even Pinterest because you're you're just kind of collecting stuff on Pinterest. But you're seeing behind the scenes stuff on on Instagram. So do you agree? Do you think that's a, a kind of a thing oh, people are talking about? Absolutely, one hundred percent. The thing with Instagram, especially for a lot, like, I mean, in our world of social media, I mean, there, there's a lot of influencers and there's a lot of people out there that you will never get in front of on, on Twitter, Facebook, you know, Google Plus or anything because it, they just, they have a million followers. Right. But on Instagram, even if they have a lot of followers, the engagement is so, like you said, it's so intimate, it's so different. And A, they're usually posting more personal things on Instagram. So you see their kids and their families. And they're more likely to respond because they might only get eight or ten comments on Instagram where they got like 322 on Facebook. So they're not going to respond to you on Facebook. Right. But with eight or ten on Instagram, you're going to get that response of, oh, yes, this is my oldest child. Or, oh, thank you so much. It was a great birthday party. Or what? Like, they're more likely to have that conversation. You can build those relationships, get that networking going. And that's for any industry. I mean, the music industry is super intensely networked on on Instagram the art industry people you know artists um, the Etsy you know type environment yeah. you know and all those home based kind of crafters and, and and do it yourselfers and stuff they love Instagram and they build these communities around each other that they're so networked and it's I mean I've even met I don't even know how many people just through Instagram that I've now I talked to on other platforms but we we connected and networked solely through Instagram to start with Exactly, exactly. Okay, Pinterest. Now, I found this quote, and I thought it was really good, from Lisa uh, Williams at Business, Commun Business to Community, and I wanted to see what you thought of it. She goes, think of Pinterest as a tour of an amazing museum where you can marvel at all its great acquisitions. Then envision Instagram as your tour guide, an insider with the backstory of what you see and the ability to bust the myth of your per preconceived notions. Do you think oh, my God, I love that. That is hilarious. <laughs> I just thought that was pretty good because you know Pinterest has been labeled as the, you know the I want platform. You go there to dream, collect stuff for your living room. Uh, shoppers go when they need something, and Instagram has been said you know it's the selfie, it's the selfie platform. It's the me 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 social media option. So, do you think that's that holds true, or um, do you have a, some differing opinions on that? I think stereotypically, yes. Instagram is you know we think of selfies. You know, and but for the record, Instagram only accounts for I think eight percent of all the selfies on the internet. Facebook okay. is like twenty or thirty or forty ridiculous percent. So right. you can blame Facebook for the selfies. Let's not blame Instagram. Um, but no, it's honestly it it, it kind of falls into that me 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 mentality. I think stereotypically, and people tend to show more of their personal life, so it kind of follows that trend. Um, but that, I don't think that means it has to be that way. And I think it's evolving out of that as more and more people use it and it grows and it gets more marketing centric. Um, and I don't think Pinterest has to be a, a go-to, you know, this is just what I want. I want it now. Um, I, I think it, it's much more of, it, it can be a dream board and it can be an idea board and, and it can be a, a, a tool for so many things. I mean, I don't know how many times I've looked for something that I need to do as a project and I, I'm getting tips and advice from Pinterest. It's not that I'm trying to buy something, right. but I, I need help and it's, it's a great resource. So I think stereotypically, yes, but realistically, no, I don't think that's the case. Gotcha. Here's a great question from uh, Vin Brown. He, he writes... How effective is the practice of liking others' photos on Instagram? Also, should you follow back everyone who follows you? Let me start with the second half, which is, heck no. <laughs> okay. You will go quite easy. Here is my best advice. Instagram is meant to be fun. So follow who you want to follow. Follow celebrities, friends, family, coworkers, you know, influencers in your industry, people you work, whatever you want, follow who you like to follow. 
it's it's you want to log on and see photos that you care about and that intrigue you so you keep coming back. If you follow everyone who follows you and half of them are these, you know, multi-level marketers who are, you know, pushing, you know, the latest rap and, and all these things, you are going to go that as crazy. <laughs> like, trust me, you're going to lose your mind and you're never going to log on to Instagram again. So no, do not follow everybody. Follow who's relevant to you. For the first part, in terms of liking other images, absolutely the more you like, the more engagement you will get in response. It's a very reciprocal environment and you are highly encouraged. I I mean, I like all, all the time. I, I, I go through and I'm just double tapping the entire way through my feed more or less. Right. And, and that's part of the, the, the vibe and, and kind of the etiquette of Instagram. But there shouldn't be an expectation. You shouldn't think, if I give this person five likes, they're going to follow me. Or if I give this mm -hmm. person ten likes and three comments, I'm going to get business from that. That should never be your intention. Your intention should be to form relationships and provide value through the connections that you have formed. So there should never be a plan to like, but absolutely... The more engagement you give, the more you will get back, and the more you'll build that relationship with people to give that value. Well, that brings up another question on Instagram is the comments. Comments to me on Instagram are, are similar to comments on Facebook. It's not the most – people don't just automatically do it. And, and, and Pinterest, it's very rare to, to comment unless somebody asks a question or I usually try to do it. If it's somebody new and I, you know, and I have something to say, like if they pin my my blog article, I say, hey, thanks so much for doing that. I, to me, that's a great way to build relationship on Pinterest. I think it's the same way on Instagram. Is if somebody comments on your post, it's it's important for you to say something, unless it's a spam. I mean, you can tell those people who are just copying and pasting, you know, hey, here's some energy your way. You know, have a great day, and they don't even they don't even didn't look at your photo. So I don't comment back on those. But if somebody says, "Hey, nice photo," or "Hey, that looks fun," or whatever, um, I usually try to comment back. Do you agree with that strategy? Absolutely. It's it's all about building those relationships. And actually, today's blog post, if you go to jetstrends.com, that's Jen with two ends. Um, I my post today was um, about building a community around your blog, and that community thought is what I apply to everything and it really is about responding to everyone and that is one thing that time consuming or not as long as you put any comment of value I promise to respond to you whether it's you know I do as much as I can on you know Facebook Google Plus everything but especially on Instagram um, it, it really is so important even it's just so much of a, a thanks at so and so and on that note there are no notifications unless you at mention the person. So if someone comments on your post, you obviously get a notification. Mm -hmm. But if you just write back and say, oh, that's a hilarious story, thanks so much for chiming in, they, they won't get a notification that you responded. You have to at mention the person who originally commented for them to get the notification that you've responded to them. So make sure you're, you're being wary of that, because otherwise you can feel like you've done all these responses and you're like, no one ever responds back to me. Exactly. Um, so make sure you're doing that, but yes, for sure, respond, keep the conversation going. If they ask a question, give an answer. If they you know, are giving you a suggestion, provide feedback, do those kind of things. Definitely get that conversation going, for sure. Gotcha. So what kind of, uh, the, kind of the differences between Pinterest and Instagram? Of course, we found that... Uh, Pinterest images do really well, the, the long portrait size, mm -hmm. um, and Instagrams are square. But I know Peg Fitzpatrick has really been experimenting with just using that square because it works well for her blog, it works great for Instagram, and she can also pin those images as well. Um, not so much the size, but is there certain types of images that do better on Instagram that we could maybe try over on Pinterest? Um, I'm just, you know, I do the same thing kind of that Peg's doing. I make all of my images square. My blog post images are square because I promote them on Instagram, so I want them square. I can pin them that way. If, if they go on Facebook. Facebook loves anything formatted for Instagram because they obviously own Instagram, so squares right. work really well. Um, not that everyone has to move to a square, but under the right circumstances, yes, it should be a square. Um, but things that, it, it depends on who you talk to, but in general, High contrast will always perform better because it stands out in the feed. Um, blue, the color blue, always works really well. It actually produces significantly higher likes and comments than any other color. So if you can do a, a graphic with a lot of either, you know, blue text or blue background, um, if you have an image that has a lot of blue sky, you know, things like that, those images will tend to perform higher. I actually worked with... Um, uh, a reader of mine on a 
quick little experiment. He always does his um, graphics in black with white font. Mm. And he read my, my post with the stat, and so he changed his next one to blue with white font. I can't remember what the exact, I want to say if it was like 28% or whatever, whatever the number was, but literally the exact amount of what the, the stat was of how much better blue performs was exactly the amount that his post increased in effectiveness for engagement. So yeah. it really does work. Um, do you have to change your whole strategy for Pinterest or Facebook or Google Plus and make everything blue? No, but try it. See what works. You know, anything you know that you can do to kind of get that additional pop of, of you know, standing out in, in a busy feed um, is good. Also for Instagram, faces work really well. So if you're showcasing a product, don't just show a necklace. Show the necklace on a model. It could be an employee. It could be you. It could be a friend, something like that. Um, and show their face. Um, if you're going to show uh, an outfit, put somebody in the outfit and show their face. Um, you know, even, you know, showing the occasional selfie. Um, you know, if you're writing a blog post, have maybe a picture of you, like selfie over here with the kid, you know, computer right. in the background. The more, you, not that you have to overload the selfies because I'm absolutely not promoting that, right. but if you can include some faces, um, it, it allows people to connect with you or the, the product or, or the post itself. So that might be worth looking into as well for Pinterest. That's really interesting because in Pinterest, they say the opposite. They say Do they not, really? They say not to have faces. They say that, um, so when you're, when you're creating your images, um, you, you know, they say that it doesn't work as well. You don't get as much engagement for faces in those pins. So I think it's worth, um, and I do this with my with my um, my blog, is I create different images for different platforms. I usually can just resize them and have them go fine, but, like, that might be something to really think about. I, okay, I'm going to do a, a picture of me and my beard for Instagram, but I won't do that for my Pinterest. Um yeah. So very, very interesting. The other question when you were talking, I was thinking about this. I know quotes are huge on both Instagram and Pinterest, you know, quote graphics or whatever. I don't know how much they really drive traffic. I mean, I think they probably get a lot of likes on Instagram and a lot of repins on Pinterest, but I don't know if they would really drive traffic back to your blog. What do you think? I no? agree. And here's my thing. I, I love a good quote. Can we like just take a chill pill with the quotes? I mean, you go on to Pinterest, you go on to Facebook, you go on to Instagram. It's like every third image is an inspirational quote. I'm like, people, I'm all for inspiration, but today I just want to get some work done. That's right. <laughs> so it's 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 hard, and people have learned, you know, the Facebook game of, you know, how can I get more engagement? Oh, if I use this this inspirational quote, it'll increase my engagement, and they'll see more of my other posts. So it's become a game, and not that Pinterest is the same thing, but again. Those ones get all the repins and they and they get all the, the engagement and people get tracked, you know, down in this idea of engagement is the most important thing in the world. And so they start using that same strategy on Instagram. And it, it does it. It's not gonna drive traffic, it's not gonna do anything for you. You don't need to worry about boosting engagement because it's not there's no algorithm. You're not trying to trick anybody. Right. So Yes, if it's part of your business, if you're a motivational speaker, please use the motivational quotes. If you find something that's hilariously related to your industry, if you're in fashion, you can find a fashion quote. Uh, you know, there, there's different ways you can incorporate it if you want to, but it, there's no real need for it. You'll, I mean, you'll rarely see, you know, me or anybody else who's unrelated to that industry trying to use those unless it's for a, a relevant purpose. Yeah, and that relevant purpose. Um, the only time I've seen really good um, uh, people coming over to my site from a quote graphic is when, like from this show, you say something spectacular, yes. and I make an image of that of quote, and it says Jen Herman, and then I post it to that, and then people go, oh, I want to find out more about that show. If she had that much good stuff to say, I'm going to go watch the whole thing. And so that's how I, I think how companies can start thinking about, okay, in my industry, not just taking the quote that Oprah said, but something that really fits into... Take a testimonial. If you yeah. get a great you know, Yelp review and you're a restaurant, put that Yelp review in a graphic on Instagram. That is someone else preaching the power of your business for you. Those are quotes you want to use. But you know, talking about you know, the power of a sunset to change your mind, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I wanted to talk about this because we're, we're getting close to time. We're going to have to do a part two for this because this, <laughs> this is fun. And if there's so many things that we're different and, and are the same on Pinterest and Instagram and I just think it's fascinating but um, the cool thing is you know you can pin video to Pinterest 
You can also do video on Instagram, and it's 15 seconds, which just stymied me forever because I like to have uh, produced video, and I didn't want to sit there and stop motion stuff. And so w there's a way to do that. You can use Dropbox and you know put it up up that way. Um, so that lets me do that. So what do you think about the importance of video on Instagram, and how is that? Do we need to do more of that, or is it dying out? What do you think about the, the video on Instagram? I don't think it's dying out per se. I think it's really powerful. Um, videos tend to produce the highest engagement um, on Instagram compared to photos, but so many people don't use it and take advantage of it that it, it means when you do use it, you have that additional power because no one else is using it. Um, a nice thing is with the most recent Instagram update is now the videos will auto loop, whereas before it would play once once you landed on it in your feed and it would stop and you had to click to play it again. Now it will actually auto loop. So if someone does miss the first couple seconds, they will catch it again at the end, which is great. It puts it more in line with Vine and, and other features that you know we're used to seeing out there. Um, if you can make great videos in 15 seconds, and yes, it's shocking how much you can cram into 15 seconds, right. I say do it. I say get out there, stand out from the crowd. I don't necessarily think every post has to be a video, but then some brands, like if you've ever seen um, like Final Cut King, he's on uh, Instagram and everything's a video. That's what he does. That's, yeah. I mean, that's what he does. So that's okay, obviously, for him, but it's definitely, it's powerful. Use it. Just don't abuse it just for the sake of trying to take advantage of video. Right. And don't put out a crappy one just to put out a video. That's another exactly. Thing. You know, you want to have <laughs> photos or videos. Put the crap away. <laughs> exactly. So uh, the other question I had, you know, what about competitors? You know, checking out what your competition is doing is a great way to do some market research on Pinterest. Uh, does this hold true for Instagram as well? Absolutely. I think you should be doing competitor analysis on every platform, um, wherever you can, and you'll you'll find different competitors on different platforms. You know, some people are huge on Instagram and not so big on other ones, or huge on Pinterest and not so big on other ones. So you, who you might have as competitors on Pinterest, you have a completely different competitor audience on Instagram. So absolutely get on there, check and see what they're up to, see what's working for them, see what doesn't work for them. Um, you know, imitations, the sincerest form of flattery. Um, not that we have to just really take advantage of everything they're doing, but if they've already been there and done it, They've already done that market research for you. Kind of piggyback off of that, but make it your own. Don't copy, don't imitate, right. but but make it work for you and, and kind of see, you know. But you might find out too that for your audience, you know, this does not work, but it is working for them. That's that's where you need to know your audience and what they expect from you. But that'll grow over time. Um, and on that note too, really quickly, go to iconosquare.com. I C O N O square S Q U A R E dot com to get analytics. Um, mm -hmm. Once you've been doing Instagram for a long time, you kind of the analytics kind of just come naturally. You know what works and what your best posting times are. Um, but when you're getting started out, that'll tell you all about your target audience, how it's growing, um, what they're engaging with, what time they're most active on Instagram, um, which gives you a really good idea of when to post, um, which is really powerful. So definitely for marketers, use that tool. And it's free. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's a great advice. I have not done that yet. I need to go ahead and uh, <laughs> see when the best time to post is for me. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of the end of the show, and I ask this pretty much to all my guests, you know, I know you're on Pinterest because I follow your boards. Mm -hmm. So this is the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. What advice would you give guys who just get, are getting started on Pinterest? Just do it. Stop worrying about it. <laughs> it's I know it's intimidating and it's scary because it's you know so highly female demographic. Right. Um, but that's the best part. It, it's so good to stand out and be unique and be different and be one of you know the, the first on the scene. Don't wait for everyone else to catch up to you or to catch up to them. Let them catch up to you. Get on there and, and do it and, and find what works. There's so many great resources out there and whether it's tailoring your boards for, you know, whether it's construction or you know automotive or, or something sports related, you can totally tailor it and, and get your, your custom audience and it's such a powerful tool. Awesome. So Jen, where can we find out more about you and your services that you provide? Absolutely. It's going to go to jenstrends.com. That's J-E-N-N-S trends, T-R-E-N-D-S.com. And everything you need is on the website. Um, you can find my book, as you mentioned, uh, at the top of the, the presentation or the session um, about the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Instagram. Um, it's a 
a little bit outdated in terms of like the comment section, like Instagram's gone through three or four updates, but all the information you need is there and how to make it work. It's got all the lingo, everything you need to know about filters and how they work and how to use them to really get you off the ground if you're struggling with getting started on Instagram. It's available on Amazon um, and Kindle for $3.49, so it's not going to break the bank or anything crazy. Um, and then all my social media sites are all linked to the website as well. So come follow me on Instagram at Jens underscore trends. Twitter is the same handle. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Google Plus, and LinkedIn, and all those fun things. <laughs> and I have all those links listed in the show notes so that you guys can go and find those really easy. And as always, I'd love for you guys to go to vi uh, visit manlypinteresttips.com. Click on the sidebar, subscribe to the email community, so you'll never miss a great show like we had today with Jen Herman. Because at Manly Pinterest Tips, we're always adding testosterone one pin at a time. See you next time, everyone. Thanks for watching.